places, people. Welcome to episode 223 of Grid Talk. Today we are here to discuss qualifying for the 2022 Belgian Grand Prix. My name is Tom Downey, and joining me today we have Sophia Richmond of Everything F1. Hi, Zof, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. And yourself? I'm doing very well, thank you. Thank you for asking. Just before we get into it, if you enjoy the podcast, we would love it if you could take five to leave us a five-star rating on Spotify or a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. If you do you'll be automatically entered into a monthly draw to win a Grid Talk t-shirt from our champion range of merch. Also, if you're one of the 72% of people who aren't yet subscribed to the channel, please consider helping us out with a like and a subscribe. Right, let's get into it. So, qualifying for Belgium 2022. Wow. Yeah. I mean... (laughs) It's a great way to start the season back again with stuff that's coming out even before we even have qualifying or even before the race. Obviously, all the penalties that are going to be taking place and how much that has messed up qualifying positions for some people and some teams that do need the points. But to be fair, it's the best track to probably do it, um, given how easy it is to overtake here in Spa and how... Yeah, the track's more easier compared to like Monza, Zandvoort, Singapore. Imagine starting back of the grid in Singapore. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I just don't think you'd I don't think you'd have much hope really. I mean, there'll be a guaranteed safety car, but that's about it in Singapore. Um, but yes, uh, just to give you a quick rundown, uh, Sophia and I just before we started the podcast, we were working out to the best of our knowledge how the grid is going to line up for tomorrow. So. This is the order that, as far as we can tell, the drivers will be starting tomorrow. So P1 will be Carlos Sainz. Alongside him will be Sergio Perez. Then on the second row, we have Fernando Alonso and Lewis Hamilton. That should be interesting. And then behind them, we have some of the Twitch boys in George Russell and Alex Albon. Then behind them, we have the ousted Daniel Ricciardo alongside fellow, uh, fellow Red Bull reject Pierre Gasly. And then rounding up the top 10, we have the two Aston Martin drivers who by some stroke of luck have ended up in Q3. Well, not really, but they did in, in Lance Stroll and Sebastian Vettel. Behind them, the final logic is Nicholas Latifi, a.k.a. the GOAT, alongside Kevin Magnussen. Then behind them, we have the last of the non-penalty drivers with Yuki Tsunoda. And alongside Tsunoda is the first of the penalty drivers in Valtteri Bottas, who's taking some new engine components. Then behind them, starting alongside each other, we have the, the championship protagonists. Max Verstappen starting P15, alongside Charles Leclerc starting P16, who once again suffered some from some questionable Ferrari strategy. Uh, then on the second to last row, we have Esteban Ocon starting P17, who actually had a very good Q3, which we'll get into. Alongside him, Lando Norris, again, outdoing Danny Rick, not hard these days. And then on the back row, we have Zhou Guan Yu, and then, last but not least, Mick Schumacher. So that's also the order in which we're going to talk about them today. So first of all, let's start with Carlos Sainz. So, yeah, uh, weird. <laughs> yeah, you know that's that's a very good word to describe it. That last lap he did, he was very scruffy. You know, he he was he hit the gravel. He was, uh, he, you know, he he wasn't making up any time. Uh, he, he, he lifted going into the old Ruse Radion section. It was just it was just an odd lap. And then also the support that he was getting from Charles as well, that strategy, putting Charles on new soft tyres and saying it was a mistake on radio, Matias saying it was a mistake. It did help in that run for um, science, but obviously not for the final one that he was trying to push for. But what? Like, just don't get it. Like... I mean, we can already check off um, <laughs> a Ferrari strategy blunder on the second part of the season of um, the uh, the season for F1, but it's just confusing. Like, it was good giving the support that he's needed because obviously, with we know that Charles was taking the penalty anyway, so getting the support and trying to have um, signs as high as possible, which inadvertently has made him take pole position, it's worked out well. 
but at the time of it, when it was happening, it was like it's like putting the hard tires on in Hungary all over again. Like, yeah. <laughs> why? Yeah, but while I think we know what Ferrari have been doing over the summer break, they've been they've been perfecting their strategy blunders because we haven't even got into the race and they've already messed up. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's a pole, but not a pole for um, for for Carlos Sainz. I mean, he didn't officially get pole, but he starts P one. So you know, so he'll be you know. I wonder if, if Ferrari will uh, will try inventing again now that their second driver is is, is starting at the front. Um, who knows, eh? But uh, but along, alongside him, the man who I thought was going to take uh, the net pole position, I was hoping was going to take net pole position, but he didn't. Sergio Perez, bit of a again, bit of a weird day for him. Yeah, I, I think just because of all the penalties and the mix-ups of what's happening, I think that kind of played around because obviously we are hearing like um, people saying, oh, we're going to start back at the grid. Oh, we're going to take a penalty, but not actually telling us what type of penalty. So is it a back of the grid? Is it a 10-point? Is it a double kind of pe- penalty doing both the ICE and the PEU unit? Like, we just never know. So I think that just added so much uncertainty. So. Uh, big shout out to the strategists as well to figure out what's actually going on and what's probably the best outcome for the team and then also for those drivers who are in contention for the championship but yeah Paris, to be fair from watching it um i was slightly distracted because i'm currently dog sitting but um he was quite quiet compared to other drivers i think he didn't really do much to get like noticed by sky and just like in commentary in general like everyone was just kind of looking at max because obviously he technically won the finished top in qualifying but obviously with all his penalties it's dropped down i I don't get it (laughs) but yeah Perez, it's good starting it's good for red bull for the points that they need and for the constructors it i mean he is he really in content still for the championship I don't think so, but it's good to get the points that's needed given that Max is starting towards the back. But again, this is a track that you can overtake quite easily. So do, do we think we're going to see a double Rebel points? Not podium, points. Oh, uh, I, uh, you know, I, I, I think a double Red Bull points is certainly on the cards. And, you know, if anybody's going to work their way through the field this year, it's going to be Max, to be fair. Mm-hmm. But it's interesting what you said about Perez almost not being noticed by the commentary. It's like, I, I think maybe that was a good thing because he was just trying to get the job done and he did a decent job, obviously. But, you know, like, like, like we've just said, you know, it was solid but not, not spectacular. Um, but, and the, the, the only bit we heard from him um, uh, was at the end of qualifying when he sounded almost disappointed to, to, to finish P3. Um, so yeah, so it's, uh, yeah, Perez, I think would be an interesting one to watch tomorrow. Um, you know, he'll probably go full tire whisperer and, uh, you know, probably, probably drive the whole race on, on a set of softs or something. Who knows? Oh, tire management king. I like. know. Absolutely. Yeah. He's yeah. Absolute Perez king. Yeah. And then starting behind him, uh, we'll talk about these two together. because I think this might be quite interesting. Um, we have the age-old pairing, quite literally. It's the Grand Eye Club of F1, Fernando Alonso and Lewis Hamilton. Oh, I'll bring back McLaren all over again. <laughs> I know, yeah. Do you think we'll see some sparks between them tomorrow? Hmm, I don't know. Because, I mean, with Alonso, for those that have stayed away during the break, uh, Alonso has announced that he has moved to Aston Martin. And that's kind of created a knock-on effect um, to what is going on with driver contracts in this silly season break and even now to the second half i think he's gonna get his elbows out and he's willing to push it to the limit i to be fair i I might see i can see maybe even in the podium position i think contention which i think that's my bold prediction if i had to do one myself but i think alonso is gonna do well i think going into the first corners i think alonso and hamilton are gonna go wheel to wheel but i do think hamilton will take over Alonso, but then Alonso will make it up later on in the race. Do you, do you think Alonso will almost sort of like subconsciously let him by and then maybe as they come down the back the back straight, the um the, the camel straight, he might think oh, I've got the URS and then go he 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 and then mm-hmm. then try and get past him into uh in, in into turn five. 
I, I could see Alonso doing that, and knowing Alonso, he will he will pull the car out dramatically with sparks flying, and he'll lock up into turn five, push Hamilton wide, and then shout karma down the radio, a la 2016 with with Jordan Palmer. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it was a. Uh, on paper, it looks like a improved performance for Hamilton this weekend, but there was still there still seems to be quite a pace deficit between them and and the top of the field, especially the Red Bulls. Um, mm-hmm. you know, if, if you look at sort of where, where they were, I mean, it's easy to compare to last year, but we can't compare to last year because the cars are completely different. So Hamilton, I mean, he's ahead of his teammate, you know, and and mm-hmm. George has been incredibly consistent this year and and has, you know, has had some very good, obviously got pole position last time out in Hungary. So, for Hamilton, it's, it's good for him to be, to qualify ahead of his teammate on merit, and uh, and and you know I, I imagine we'll see something good from him tomorrow. You know he has you know he's not a seven time world champion and a hundred and three time race winner if I'm not mistaken for no reason. And he and he loves Spa anyway. I mean most of the drivers do. But how do you think he's going to fare tomorrow aside from battling with Alonso? Yeah, I mean I think it's going to show his skill and his. I mean both of them are legends in um in f1 and the amount of years of experience that they have i again could be another contender for podium as well i think hamilton will play it safe though because both him and george are consistent um obviously minus george in silverstone but hamilton the last five races have had a consistent top six finish he is doing very very well now and i think he's got his like mojo second win now to kind of push through could this also potentially be the race where he wins to keep his streak of winning a race of every single season he competes because i don't know what other race might be a contender for that for him who knows <laughs> yeah I, I mean you know with hamilton we've we've uh you know, you know we, we said it sort of a few times this season you know it's, it's it's been a bit of a running theme of is this a season that he's not going to win a race you know, we said it quite strongly at the start of the season when he went out in Q1 in Saudi. Um, but then as we sort of moved into, uh, you know, moved to Canada and then into the Silverstone, to, you know, Merck have improved. So, mm-hmm. you know, you, you'd never write him off. And I, and people listening and watching, they'll probably know I'm a Max fan. But, you you know, you never write off Hamilton. He's won in every single season that he's competed. Exactly. You know, even in years like 2009 and 2013. So um you know so so yeah uh, I I don't think he'll win tomorrow you know I, I think I think the likes of Perez and Sainz and the sort of and and um you know the likes of Max and Leclerc they will likely pass him um I mean it's Spa after all you know it's a good opportunity um you know for for, the, for them to do it you know Max is going to have He's going to have that sort of push from his home crowd as well. So, mm-hmm. he, I, I think Hamilton will have a decent result, but I, I don't, I don't think we'll even see him on the podium, let alone the top step. Okay, I mean to be fair, looking at the rest of the tracks this season, though, what other race do you think he will have the best opportunity given? to win a race like spa obviously we say about how the overtakes are and obviously with the penalties that people have had he is starting quite high i mean he's been around this area a bit in qualifying in previous races but again not as much overtaking um abilities it's like uh, not much um chances for overtakes that's what i'm thinking like i think this could be like it's even sky commentators are saying that as well like it is probably one of the better races for him to get the win to keep that streak alive but I can't think of any other race that would be kind of close to that opportunity for him. Yeah. And, um, you, you, you know, it's like next weekend as I'm for. No. You, yeah. You, you, you can't really overtake there. Imagine oh. all that banking. Like that. Oh, imagine him going to wheel, wheel to wheel with Max on that banking. Yeah. I don't think, I don't think the, uh, the Dutch residents would be too happy. Um, but mind you, I think, I think he'll only be doing that when Max is lapping him this year. Uh, Anyway, moving down the grades before people get their pitchforks out. Uh, P5, George Russell. Not quite the highs of P3 from last year in a Williams. Um, I bet I bet he didn't think that this year he'd be P5 in a Mercedes. Um, but stranger things have happened. Um, yeah. How do you think he's going to get on tomorrow? 
I think he's just going to play, uh, drive a consistent race, head down, not elbows out. I think he's just going to keep it easy, focus on the race itself and not trying to do any kind of stupid mistakes because he's still trying to get points for the team, for the constructors. And I think he just still wants to prove that he is a good teammate to Lewis. And I think continuing this top five streak, um, minus obviously, um, Silverstone, that's still on the record now. Like he is still finishing in top five in almost every race that he's competed, I think, minus Silverstone. So I think he just want to finish where he started, maybe move up a point, uh, an extra position, but I don't see him getting too kind of jumpy and taking too many kind of dodgy overtakes um, during the race. Yeah, um, you, know, you know, Russell has been arguably the most consistent driver this year. So, you know, I, I, I think you made a very good point that they'll sort of keep his head down, try and stay out of trouble, you know, because we've seen it before where Carter tried to go three wide into La Source um, and it hasn't worked out. You know, 2012, we had Roman Grosjean and his catapulting car coming through and then obviously... Yeah, I saw that from Ted Kravitz. Yes, I did absolutely. Um, and then, tw- and then, twenty eighteen. You know, we had that quite scary accident where Alonso ended up on top of. Uh, I think Leclerc was in the Sauber at the time. I think it was his first season, first year. We had the halo. That was quite a that was quite a scary one. So hopefully they'll behave themselves going into La Source this year, um, and also hopefully there's no safety car caused by the rain. Um, you know, so we actually get a racing lap. Uh, we're getting to that in a bit. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I think I think Russell will probably sort of sit back, let it unfold in front of him. To be honest, I think there could be a fairly decent chance that if there is a bit of a sort of mashup in front of him, he might just sneak around the outside. Obviously, got to be careful because there's gravel there now. It's going to make it interesting. Um, but you know, if there is a bit of a sort of melee in front of him. He, he could end up sneaking into the leads. We never know. You know, Anything can happen in Spa. Spa. Like, <laughs> we've it, seen it all. Exactly. And and do you know what else can happen in Spa? Nothing like last year. Uh, so so mo- moving down, the, you know, moving down the grid a bit. P six, Alex Albon. Wow. Absolutely. Finally, he got into Q three on merit. I just want to say he got into Q three. He knocked out Danny Rick. Easily done. And. You know, and and put that Williams up into Q3. You know, learn obviously learned lessons from his teammate Gotifi. Got it into Q3. A great qualifying performance for him. Yeah, he is finally the last driver because he was the only driver coming into spot that's not made it into Q3 by merit. So perfect for him. Um, I think it proves as well how the cars are this season as well. Um, we wanted close racing. We wanted close kind of battling even without a race taking place but just even like the times and the numbers they are quite close um maybe not as close as previous seasons like maybe two or three teams on one kind of bunch and then two or three teams on another bunch but like overall on the 20 grid it's getting a lot closer but alex like so happy he's back on into f1 um racing again for williams it was the best decision obviously he's renewed his contract as well during the summer break best decision Williams will ever do for this season. I think there's also another maybe decision of somebody leaving that might be the best decision as well. <laughs> um, but yeah, I I really hope he can still stay in the points and not have any issues. We don't know how Williams is because we've never really seen a Williams minus George in that two laps that took place last year up in the front in Spa recently. So We'll see. I, I really would like to see him keep his points, stay in sixth or seventh, but not drop down because um, he is doing so well in that car this season. Absolutely. Yeah, he uh, he deserves to be in Q3. You know, he, he's, he's been working hard this year. He's, you know, he's got points anyway, and it's nice to see him get the one lap pace out the car as well, which it does appear is somewhat there. So Williams have obviously made some aero upgrades and Albon is settling into that team nicely. I also agree with you that I think that's the best decision Williams have made, getting him on a multi-year deal. I don't, I guess something just happened in F2. Um, I, I, uh, you know, I, I don't think we'll see him uh, perhaps sort of like move up the field as such, but if he, if he sort of like stays roughly where he is, get some good points for, for the team, I think that'll be good. I'll tell you what else I think will play into his hands a bit is he obviously has um, he obviously has history of, of racing for the fields when he was with Red Bull, 
Now I know, obviously, it's a different, you know, different era of car, all the rest of it. But he's got some experience of being up there in the in the field anyway. So hopefully that will sort of play to his strengths a bit. And to be fair, it's not the first time he started sort of like this high up the grid, you know, because he, he had it a bit when he was at Red Bull for the for that sort of season and a half. So hopefully it will help him. Yeah, I, I hope so. But I mean, it's a Red Bull. You're comparing a Red Bull to a Williams as well, though. That's <laughs> that's uh, a bit. Of a... Yes. Okay. Yeah, I, I am. But but I'm I'm also uh, you know I'm I'm also I'm also sort of, sort of thinking you know yeah he's 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 got the experience of when he was there. It's not so much about the car; it's the fact that he's been in that in yeah. that position. Yeah. Um, who knows? You know, he might absolutely stuff it. We'll, we'll see. Um. But anyway, behind him, uh, and if anybody has been living under a rock over the over the last little week or so, Daniel Ricciardo is an absolute shock to nobody on planet Earth is leaving McLaren at the end of 2022. Insert shock Pikachu face here. Now, it's safe to say that the Danny Rick and, and McLaren partnership has not worked, and both both sides of of this you know, could have obviously done done things differently. Lots of lessons will be learned. We've heard Zach Brown talk about it. Um, but let's not focus on that. So Danny Rick, P7, but he actually qualified P11, I believe, because he got knocked out by Alex Albon, who we just spoke about. So, again, his teammate, you know, crossed the line, what, P5, P6, maybe? I think P5 Norris was. Um, and yet again, Danny Rick, he was out in Q2. I mean, what, what, what more can we say? Yeah, um, I think Norris. If I'm looking on uh, F1. Oh wait, yeah, that's the right one. It's saying that Norris um crossed the line in P10, so still ahead of Ricardo. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, but even so, it was about half a second difference. Um, the times as well for it, but yeah, um. <sighs> I don't know. With the situation with Ricardo as well, given everything that's happening externally as well, it, it's it's quite tricky. I kind of thought that with him announcing that he was going to leave, he was going to like pull it right out of the back, saying like, "Look, you got rid of me, like fooled you." Um, but that wasn't the case at all. And I don't know. Um, seeing him in interviews as well, he just seems so down, like. He keeps on saying it's mutual, but we all know it's probably not mutual, um, given how his track record's been for the two years. I, I don't know. I just I hope he can find a seat maybe next year. But yeah, his qualifying wish is not not up to pace from what we know. And uh, Christian Horner was talking so much about him um, with uh, the Sky team, saying like how different he is compared to how he was in Red Bull. I think the worst decision was him leaving Red Bull to go to Veno. He probably should have stayed, um, but he just did that for a better contract, which, fair enough, a driver can do that, but that literally started a downward spiral for him in his performance. And, I mean, to be fair, he got $21 million, so not bad payout. But if he doesn't have a seat next year, it's going to be quite tough, and we'll see how the board... Uh, chooses which contract is more valid for Piastri because I'll have a effect on where Daniel could go because he said he would go back to Alpine but qualifying just would Alpine want to by this point that's the question because he's, well, he's not the driver he was yeah but I mean well, who else in content if Piastri goes to McLaren who mm. else Apparently, it was rumored that even Gasly is apparently in contention now. <laughs> uh, he's, he's not going to sit alongside uh, Ocon. They hate each other. Exactly. But apparently, according... Well, I mean, this is coming from Helmut Marco, so uh, <laughs> we'll what? see. But, like, other media agencies are still talking about it as well, saying that apparently he's on radar. But I don't see him even leaving AlphaTauri to go to an Alpine. But, yeah. I don't know. That's, this, is, this, is a, this is a whole other podcast in itself, I think. Yeah. But his, quali- his qualifying, like, will he finish around the same time? I think he's going to drop down. I think it's a given that he's going to drop down the grid. I think he'll go out of points. That's how much of a drop down I'm, I'm betting on. Yeah, he, yeah, he just he just hasn't got the pace, or, or he just hasn't got this, yeah, the pace, the speed. 
or the confidence in the car. So he's, uh, yeah, you know, I just can't see him holding his position, let alone making up positions. Um, but anyway, you know, I, I think we've probably read Danny Rick enough this season and last season. Um, behind him, uh, fellow ex Red Bull alumni Pierre Gasly, P8, has obviously been spoken about. Decent showing from him. He's he's had a bit of a topsy turvy season this season, uh, but it was it was a it was a much improved performance from him today. I thought a bit unlucky to miss out on Q three, but obviously you know didn't quite have the pace. Uh, but starts P eight. How do you think he's going to fare tomorrow? If we take how he has been this season, he is going to have an incident in the first turn or within the first lap. You hear his name saying going wheel to wheel with another driver or there's been contact by Gasly. I'm still sticking by that. That is going to happen again at Spa tomorrow. But I don't know how much it will be. But I think like he he's getting better. I, I don't know what I don't know, maybe it's because obviously the talk about Alfatori has resigned him and such. But he just kind of changed and I'm hoping that the break as well has done him justice to kind of reset and refocus for the second half of the season because we do see drivers come back after the break and pretty much 180 on the skills and abilities and the confidence they have in the car so i'm hoping that's the case with gassy because like you said he's just not had the best season given that we were expecting so much from him at the start of the season and he's not achieved any of that yeah, I mean, if we look at Gasly from last season, you know, his uh, his stock was probably the highest it's ever been in F1. And now he's uh, not forgotten about, but he's not he's not the first driver on everybody's lips anymore, which is a bit of a shame. Um, obviously, quite always going to be Spa now. He's always going to be quite an emotional weekend for him because obviously it was uh, three years ago today that he lost his best friend in the, um, in the F2 feature race. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and yeah, you know that's that's always gonna you know that's always gonna be on his mind. I'd imagine as we come into come into Spa, um, hopefully he'll take that emotion, that energy, and put that into his race, like he did in 2019 after he'd been dropped by Red Bull, because he actually drove a pretty decent race mm-hmm. for Toro Rosso nice. that 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 weekend. Um, so yeah, so Gasly, good good qualifying. I hope he can stay in the points and. Uh, and more to point, I hope he can stay ahead of P9's uh, James Bond Jr. enemy esque. Lo- uh, I was going to say Lawrence Stroll. No, he's no, he, <laughs> you can get him and his ego in the car. Um, P9 Lance Stroll. Um, even though he's even though he crossed the line something like P14, I think he was. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't remember anymore because I haven't got it next. Yeah, I've got, P14. I've got, he was. I, I thought so because I remember hearing that he was P14. And it sounded like he was almost laughing. Did you hear that team radio when when his engineer told him he was like, oh, "Okay, Dad." It's like, yeah, it's like, bro, that's not how you react to having a pretty dismal qualifying. But I don't know if it's maybe because he did finish P fourteen, not that far off from where it like ended. It was mm, half a second or so from um, Norris who finished in P10. I think it's also maybe he was thinking, oh, there's a lot of drivers ahead of me that are going to go back to the grid. So, like, while, yeah, it was not the best finish P14, I know I'm going to make up a few positions for the actual race. Maybe. That was my thing. I actually didn't hear the radio, but I probably will listen to it after this to hear what it said. I did hear um, his teammates' radio instead um, for that. But Stroll... Mm, could drop down he could do better um he's kind of a wild card because when he's been in like the top 12 top t- yeah when he starts in the top 12 or top 14 he does get he has been getting points he's gotten three points already he's gotten in canada uh australia and then france i believe as well was it france one of the more recent ones so you might still get a point we don't know again it's spa like Anything could happen. We can see uh, another Williams on podium and have it be Latifi. <laughs> well, you know, stranger things have happened in Spa. Uh, yeah, let's uh, let, let's you know let's 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 see see what he see what he does tomorrow. I just miss him and Brad going at each other on on, on the radio. To be honest, Pick um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, 
yeah, it's just that easy, okay, better Lance. Yeah, and then just, and then I remember, I remember there was one where, where Brad said, uh, said, right, pit and you know, box and pit confirm. And he said, why, why would you? And they went, oh, stay out then. It was like a parent saying, well, do what you want. You won't get any dinner. You know, so it was, uh, yeah, so uh, they, they had quite an interesting dynamic, those two. But um, yeah, ahead of Stroll was, uh, uh, was um, the, Man, who was definitely in the twilight of his F1 career, and obviously it only has a handful left. I think we're down to single digits for him now. Uh, four-time world champion Sebastian Vettel. Again, yes, just just seeing him go out, and then I think I put in in the Slack chat. He just sounds done with F1. It's just like mm-hmm. you know, he, he you he crossed the line, and then he was just you know, it wasn't again. He was knocked out, and it was just like you know, you could hear he was just he was just. He's just gutted, and he's just, yeah, it's just talk about a fall from grace. Um, you know, I think it's safe to say that last year at Ferrari ruined him, mm-hmm. and he's yeah. a shadow of his former self. Like zero point zero zero two, like that is absolutely crazy. Cause he, you could hear he put his all into that that last lap, and like the laps that he was doing, and he was trying to get the positions. And then to go out, and it's not the first time he has gone out with that small of a uh, difference as well between Q2 and Q3, or even Q1 to Q2. He's done that a handful of times this season already. And um, yeah, his radio was just heartbreaking. Like some of the things that he's um, we see on social media recently when Seb was announcing was like about how he's telling fans like go for Mick, like support Mick. Like he's just completely done and it's heartbreaking given that he has had such a great career in f1 and to kind of finish it this kind of way it is quite sad um i'm hoping maybe get some more points um just keep on getting points i don't think you will get a podium for these last few races unless something magical happens but like if you can just continue keeping some points and supporting the team as you can um i think that'll probably be a better way to end his career um at the end of the season yeah um you know i, I think it's safe to say that uh, that seb is just winding down to his last few races now um it's it's a, it's a shame to see him go in in the way that he's going you know and and you know i hope that other drivers don't go this way he's v hamilton um you know I, I hope that they can sort of go out I should say, not with dignity, that sounds wrong, but but go out before their hand is semi-forced. Uh, so, pull, a, uh, pull a Nico, just retire. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, think just, that's the best situation you can ever do is let you win and then just be like, nah, I'm done, I'm out. Yeah, yeah, just ultimate mic drop. Um, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, so, yeah, Seb, you know, he's just, you know, I I, I think he's sort of just, he's, he's just doing a box tick exercise um, he's obviously got his mind and and his his attention and his energy is now slowly being focused on po- on his post F one life. So you know whether he, I wouldn't be surprised if we see him back on on the grid next year as a mentor to uh, Mick Schumacher. Um, I really he, wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, if he has a spot because it's still not confirmed as yeah, well. That's <laughs> as, yeah, as yeah when, when Crofty asked. Uh, Gunter Stein on the pit wall said uh, said you know what about the second seat and then and Gunter being being very coy there yeah no I I you know I, I do think we'll see Mick on, on the grid next year and I think wherever Mick goes Seb will be there to mentor him probably not every week because obviously he's got I think Seb's got two or three young kids and and you know he's got a family and he's been doing this since what 2006 is it 2006 2007 it was midway 2006 with yeah Williams wasn't it yeah. William Spin W, I think. I don't know. I wasn't very old. Um, Same. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was older than you. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so, yeah. So the point is, he's been in F1 an awfully long time, and he's uh, yeah, he's uh, he's moving on to pastures new. But yeah, it's uh, just just a bit of a shame, I think, to see the way he's going. Um, but it paves the way for the absolute goat of F1, Nicholas Latifi, who starts P11 to side through the field and take a stunning victory tomorrow. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, he's close enough to get points because he is the only driver, minus obviously um, Hulkenberg, 
to not have points this season. So it is possible. God forbid if it's raining as well. We know how good the Williams are in the wet. We've seen it in free practice back in Hungary. Um, and then when it went dry, it just completely went downhill in qualifying. But we know for some reason, Williams love the wet races and wet tracks and everything. Um, but yeah, Latifi, I mean, he didn't really do well in natural qualifying because a lot of it's not on his own merit, but he is contending for points. I think if he gets more than a single point, that's going to be quite an interesting one. If he finishes top five, that will be like social media will lose their head. Like they already lost their head in. Um, if the, all right, if it's if he finishes top five, I'll shave my head. Bad, bad. It's like, no, <laughs> it's live done. It's live done. Oh god. <laughs> I'm I mean, not, I, I, I'm gonna drive over to Belgium tonight and just stab his tires or something. I can't. I can't fly over. Yeah, I, I, I can't lose this. But, but yeah, I, he can get he can get a few points. I think. I um, <laughs> but we'll see. I I think he can get at least one or two points. I think. I think it also will be good given that he has had a weird season. Um, obviously, there's rumors circulating about his contract as well. And I think getting the points and kind of performing the second half of the season, I think will be kind of a good way to end off if he was to finish at the end of the season. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, I, I know we joke about the team and all the rest of it, but it is nice to see him up there. I, okay. I know it's not of his own merit, but if he, if he'd have crossed the line plum last, he'd be like P 13 and he's P okay yeah when you say it like that it doesn't sound great but the point is he's on the cusp of getting points so you know I I want to see him get a point because hey just one yeah just just the one yeah certainly not any more than fifth place please Nikki um <laughs> it, you know it's uh you know I have gone by a razor soon uh but um but yeah he, you know he's a uh, you know, he's he's a nice guy, um, but being a nice guy doesn't necessarily mean you're a good driver. Um, you know, hopefully not good enough to finish fifth anyway. Uh, so uh, yeah, so so you know, I, I just want to see him get a point because I'm hoping that it'll sort of like give him a bit of a sort of kickstart. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and you know, I I don't think he'll be enough to save his seat. I think that seat is. I think he's on borrowed time, especially as William said that they don't need the Latifi investment. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Um, but you know, he might already know. We don't know. Um, so he, you know, so he just needs to go out and enjoy himself. I think um, someone who didn't enjoy themselves, Kevin Magnuson, pretty disappointing quality. Oh. God, I like obviously Gunther is on the pit wall for Sky um this weekend. And what he was talking about before qualifying was like, yeah, we're gonna have make sure that Kevin's quite high because obviously we know Mick's at the back of the grid. We're gonna try to do everything that we can to help Kevin Magnuson and he literally gets out in Q3. It's like Q1, sorry, the first one. Um confusing and heartbreaking. Um I don't know what the reason was, like I don't know if there was like an engine situation or a mechanical issue, but like it's not something that we're used to seeing from Kevin this season. Um, normally we see him like close to the top 10 um, more than anything else. So I don't know what's just happened. He, But yeah, it was heartbreaking, like literally after Q1 going back to Gunther and you just see his face is just completely dropped because obviously he was so excited to try to get Kevin as high as possible and kind of supporting him and then out in Q1. Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, just, I don't know what happened. You know, House has showed a lot of promises here and then it's, uh, it's just, it's just sort of, just not, not always come to fruition for them. You know, they've had some great highs, you know, the, uh, you're locking out the third row in Canada and then they've had races, of oh, sorry, qualifiers like today where, you know, you came across the line about, P nineteen or something. It doesn't make P80. sense. It doesn't, does it? You know, because you know, because the the, the, fir- the first race back, you know, we finished what P five, I think, mm-hmm. and it's sort of like you know, what's happened? Yeah. So 
and I think Haas has also upgrades as well. I think they've kind of come into some of the upgrades. So I don't know if it was, I mean, it's obviously you got some upgrades on uh, mix as well, but I think um, Kevin has some upgrades as well, but I, I just don't get it. Like, we know how good Kevin is. We've seen him this season and previous seasons that he is like saving house this season, I think. Um, and obviously with his multi-year contract, we're going to see a lot more next, next season than the years after, but it was just, it was a weird one. Like I said, like we were expecting him to finish like towards like closest to the top 10 and then he's out P19 and by a big margin as well on time is I, uh, I just don't know. Like, Haas was so confident in Kevin, and then to see that just doesn't make sense. Yeah, it's just, uh, yeah, it's just, yeah, he, he, he'll be disappointed. Gunter will, will, will be, uh, will, will, will be disappointed. So, well, uh, yeah, it, it was P18 that came up, and, I, and I've just found the Haas social media post, which is, uh, yeah, I think it's safe to say it's very disappointing for them. Uh, but moving moving down the grid, we have the last of the non penalty drivers, which has a lot that are only down to P thirteen. Uh, Yuki Sonoda, um, bit of a dismal quality for him. Just I forgot he was there. No word of a lie. When when Sophia and I were trying to work out all the driver where who finished where, we forgot about Yuki. It was only it was only because I went through and counted and numbered it in Microsoft Word that I realized we've gotten a driver. That's how nondescript UT was today. Yeah, I mean, he was just quiet, like no spin outs, no hits, no nothing. So that's fine. Like that's good day for Yuki. It was just quiet. Um, obviously getting out P nineteen, um, in qualifying. Will we see him move up? Maybe. Will we see him maybe spin out? Maybe. Who knows? I just, I think he just needs to have a quiet because he's also one of the other drivers that doesn't have a contract for next season as well. He needs to start pulling out the results and getting some of the results out and hopefully starting a little bit higher up on the grid um, for tomorrow. He's probably going to be able to. Yeah. Um, I mean, Yuki, you know, I, I've got to be honest, I don't really have an awful lot to say about him. You know, he's a, he just needs to, he just just needs to get his head down and just you know if he just keeps it yeah just keep his head down and drive if he, if he keeps it pointing in the right direction for the whole race that's good for him mm-hmm. uh, but yeah you know I think he'll have to be looking over his shoulder shoulder as well with the likes of Liam Lawson obviously taking part in FP1 and you know you know you know, pe- you know people like Felipe Trugovich or maybe Johan Ruvula. Yeah, that seat could possibly be under threat. Maybe not to Rubler. Um, well, yeah. yeah, Red Bull, Red Bull. Yeah, well, well, that's that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, you know, the the, the point is, you know, there are there's well, there are several drivers who may well be uh, uh, be looking at that Alpha Tauri seat. So mm-hmm. yeah, so you need a couple of clean weekends. Um, so starting alongside him is the uh, the resident barista. Uh, Valtteri Bottas. Um, he qualified P20, which is the first time since, I believe, Monaco, uh, Monaco 2015, when he was still with Williams, mm-hmm. that he uh, that he got knocked out in Q1. Now, let's caveat this a bit and say, oh, or certainly I'm going to caveat this and say, I wonder if he didn't necessarily put too much into it because he knew he was getting lots of engine penalties. Mm-hmm. So I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, I just watched that F2 crash. Um yeah. that that's gonna hurt for Logan Sargent. I would not be surprised if um if, if Bottas almost sort of just did it as as a box ticking exercise where mm-hmm. you know where he went out, he got within the 107% time because obviously they'd have to you know, get granted permission. And he's still starting P14 as opposed to back of the grid, which is the other six drivers that we'll get into in a moment. Um, so yeah, so what are your thoughts on Bottas? Do, 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 you, do you agree with me? Do you disagree? I 100% agree. Uh, earlier on Grid Talk, I said big shout out to the strategist to kind of figure out what's the, probably the best outcome. I think that is probably one of the best strategies for the qualifying for any of the drivers um, for today because while they know that he was going to take the penalty, he 
tick the boxes, but then still wound up doing very well with the starting grid of P14. I think it could be good in points, maybe. I think he's doing so well with Alpha as well. Um, he's kind of got into his own kind of chair position and kind of taking control of a team, which is what I think he would never have been able to do in Mercedes. Obviously, they say there's no one and two, but we all know there is a one and two. Alfa Romeo, there is a one and two, given that it's Joe's first year and such. Um, but he's just doing so well and performing so well and giving what Alpha needed as well. They needed some points. They needed some, like, good battling with other drivers and other constructors, and that's exactly what it is. And, yeah, um, Bottas' strategy today was perfect, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, I, uh, I, I think, you know, I, I think you've actually hit the, hit the nail on the head. And I'm not just saying that because you agreed with me. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so you know, so uh, I, I, I think if if there weren't any other engine penalties, and I think if, um, you know, if if it was just him, I think perhaps he would have just done basically done an installation lap, and that being that. Um, although it wouldn't have, you know, although it wouldn't have really mattered as such anyway. Yeah. I, I, it depends on what if it was a back of a grid penalty or a ten place grid penalty. I think I, his. I think his was a twenty five place grid penalty. I read. Oh, because it's a double. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah because I think Alfa just can't quite have it all. Um, yeah. and they just put fresh. They've obviously done multiple components for it to be twenty five place because that's yeah. probably a ten and a fifteen for what ice and maybe turbo and control electronics. I don't know. I haven't read yeah. the. F1 notes on, uh, no, I haven't read the FIA release on it yet. Yeah, nothing's been released. But I mean, with both alphas as well, both of them having penalties, I think it was a given because given how this season they have had so many engine problems, so many mechanical problems, not just for one driver, but for both drivers. Yeah. Um, to be honest, we've never actually, I don't think we've had a double alpha DNF though this season, which is surprising. Uh, no, I think you're correct. I know we've had, obviously had some Ferrari It's always one ones. or the other. Yeah, but yeah, but you know, you're absolutely right in that the Ferrari power unit is definitely, whilst it's obviously pretty powerful, it's not perhaps that reliable, and it's been the Achilles heel for for the team, which is a shame because the team has certainly been much improved this year. You know, I've I've been impressed with both drivers. Mm-hmm. Um, Bottas, I've always liked him, and you know, thought he was a bit hard done by sometimes at Mercedes. So it's nice to see him. Uh, nice to see him looking relaxed, looking happy. Probably because he's, he's, he's got a multi-year deal. Been impressed with Joe Guanyu. I hope he gets an extension into F1 um, for for next year. Uh, I think he will. Um, yeah. His so, performance yeah. and his funding, those two, is what you need for a driver, and he's done exactly yeah. that. Yeah, he's done, you, you, you're absolutely you're absolutely right. He's done exactly that, and you know he's uh, um, yeah, you know he's, he's just been unlucky with reliability. I'd say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, but um, but behind Bottas is the man who crossed the line, um, P1 in uh, in Q3, Max Verstappen, current championship leader as well. Mm-hmm. Just putting that out there, um, <laughs> by 80 points and counting. Um, oh, God. <laughs> there we go, there it is. Um, yes, so yeah, Max, um. I mean, you can't really argue that he had a great, great qualifying. Um, he did what he needed to do to stay ahead of Leclerc, um, or well, sorry, start ahead of Leclerc, mm-hmm. who well, he obviously got hamstrung by Ferrari's strategy anyway. Uh, what do you think Max is going to do tomorrow? Send it, absolutely send it. I mean, we've seen before him making up positions, um, starting slightly back um, in other races. Again, Spa. Easy track to, well, not easy. It's one of the easier tracks to overtake and have opportunities to overtake. And given how powerful the DRS is this season as well, I I mean, we said earlier today probably, like, I can see a Red Bull double points. Maybe not a double podium. That I feel like <laughs> if someone was to put a bet on that, that would be, like, a great return if that was to happen. But I see Max going into the points tomorrow. Where are the points? No idea. Maybe top five. Who knows? Um, but he's just gonna go elbows out, overtake when he can. Yeah, I want to see. To be fair, I want to see after the end of the race, who did the most overtakes, and also how many overtakes per lap as well. Because sometimes you have some drivers that do two 
two overtakes in one single lap or three overtakes sometimes. That would be kind of a cool thing to pull up and see for tomorrow. No, absolutely. Yeah, you know, I, th I think it is safe to say that Max is going to absolutely send it tomorrow. He's not going to hang around. He's going to do his best to keep Leclerc behind him. Um, and, you know, I, I again agree with you. So I think it's, I think it's a given to say that he's going to end up in the points. I don't think he'll be on the podium. I think like that, I think it'll just be too much to ask, especially with some of the drivers in front of him. But stranger things have happened. Look at um, Hungary when he started 10th. So, you know, so, you know, and obviously, you know, look at, um, look at some of the drives that people have done from back in the grid. I'm thinking Hamilton Brazil last year. It's a good example. Perez, um, Bahrain. Exactly. You know, <laughs> Secure 2020 was, was, was down to plumb last uh, in, in the first lap and then went on to sensationally win. He's obviously his maiden win. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, you know, so, so, yeah. Anything's possible. Yeah, anything's possible with, with Max. And and now that he's not as hot headed as he once was, you know, he'll 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 play the long game, I think. Mm -hmm. Definitely. But um yeah, so moving on to his championship rival for this year, Charles Leclerc. Uh I think that's a new record for for Ferrari. We haven't even got into the race and already they've made a mistake. They've put him on the wrong tire. And then and then he went out and said, Oh, what the hell is this? And uh, and Ferrari said, "Oopsie, silly me, tihi," and uh, yeah, stay I, out as well. Yeah, yes, stay out. Yeah, don't bother coming in to change, and then bringing him back into pit, fuel change tires, and sending him back out when he didn't even have enough time to. Oh my god, where do we even begin? Um, go on, Soph. Oh, that the tell us how you really lab. feel. <laughs> I uh, I feel oh god, Ferrari's Ferrari's the new Williams when it comes to laughing stocks, I think. Um and I am sorry and I apologize to the Ferrari fans, but y'all have to agree with this. Like every single race there has been a strategy blunder of some sort or a Ferrari problem of some sort. Every single race. Like Call me out if it's if I'm wrong, but I believe I'm quite right on this. I just don't get it. Like the tire strategy, and then also the last lap as well, coming out of the pit lane, literally milliseconds almost by signs. They were very close to almost kind of hitting sometimes, and it oh, it was just weird. Like I, I'm saying weird all the time because this is literally how it was with this qualifying. I, I, I get some of the timing strategies, but like some of the calls were quite dodgy. And I feel like some of the conversations probably shouldn't have been on the radio, like saying, oh, sorry, mistake. You, it's not a single, a single person's decision on something like this. It's got to go through multiple channels. Any one person could have been like, um, shouldn't we save these tires for Sunday? I mean, weather says it, it might be a little bit wet, maybe intermediates. So you would still need a good pair of soft tires, if not two, especially new ones as well, because we know how good they are. I, what? Like, just don't get it. I I think, yeah, like I said, tick off Ferrari mess up strategy already for the second half of the season. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I don't really have anything to add to that. You've... Uh... Yeah, um, you seem to be joining a non Ferrari, and rightly so. I mean, you know, they they're a team that don't know how to win a championship, and things like today. Bear in mind, this is a quality review, not a race review. And today, they yeah. just proved that they exactly don't know how to um, how how to how to win a race. So I don't, you know, just. <laughs> I mean, for, for 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 me as a match fan, it's brilliant because it's just you know you you just take it and run. You know, why wouldn't you? But um, but yeah, but you know, I you know, one of my best mates, Jr., who might be listening to this. Oh, Jr. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I really pity him because he, he's a Ferrari fan. And sorry, bro, mm -hmm. but this is uh, you know, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna take the grass to chance with both hands. Yeah. So I, yeah. I have so many uh, friends who are Italian who are big Ferrari fans, and like they work at like the coffee shop I go to, and like every time I come in on a Monday, they're like, "We're not talking about it. We're not talking yeah, about the race." Like. Uh, <laughs> And how, like, you had such a good lead, a good graphic. Like, I was doing some graphics and seeing, like, the points change for the first half of the season. And, like, you just see it's, like, Ferrari's just extending, then you just see a drop. Like, 
uh, what? And like the gap that between Max and Charles as well is like one of the largest that they've had coming into the um, second half of the season. Yeah. So statistically, Charles could still have a chance to win the world championship, but it's more you got to make sure Ferrari's strategy is on point and Red Bull's is not. And like kind of 180, which will never happen. Red Bull strategy, like Hannah Schmidt is probably one of the best strategists She's in, got it. in the F1. Yeah. She's got it absolutely nailed. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, we can go on about this all day, um, but let's, uh, let's move down the grid to P17. Um, Esteban Ocon. Yeah, it's had a pretty decent quality um, to, to you know to to, to a point. Uh, it was interesting that he was giving Alonso a tow. If I if you know if I was up my staff now, I, I'd have said, "Nah, uh, Fernando, you do you, and you're the one who's left." Um, but no, he was. Uh, uh, you know, he was. Uh, uh, yeah, he was. Uh, it, it's it's a shame to see him this far down the grid because you know he you know because he would have been starting on the second or, or the third row, which is a very very good showing from him. He's been one of the most quiet and consistent drivers this season. Uh, You don't hear about him much in commentary or doing major overtakes, elbows out overtakes. He's just steadily getting the points needed for Alpine. I do understand that uh, with the toe, but it was weird because the first part of that lap, he was so far away from Alonso that it just didn't help. And then the minute that they like slingshotted it, Alonso was yellow on sector one. So like, what was the point on that? They could have done like at least one more attempt per lap, I think, depending on how the time was. Um, but Alcon's probably been one of the most consistent drivers as well this season, but most quietest consistent driver. Obviously not top fives, but still getting what's needed for Alpine. And I think with the situation with Alonso moving as well, like, yes, you can be better. You can be better, like Alma said in interviews as well. His He did not hold back his views about... the the entire situation, not just Alonso's, but like with Piastri and a few others. Um, but I think they just need to kind of put, like pull up the like shorts and kind of like get into like, we need to get these points. They're still battling with other teams for constructors. They, that's their main focus. They're not winning world championship this season. Definitely not. They need to start pulling out good results. And I think while Alonso is leaving, they're still going to push as much as they can to get both of those both those drivers up. Yeah, uh, I mean, you made a very good point about uh, about Arcon being sort of sort of like, sort of almost a bit of an unsung hero this year. You know, he's uh, he's really taken the fight to Alonso this year, and he's obviously learned a lot from Alonso this year. So he's a, I think, I think he's doing a standout job in that Alpine. In his last year, he obviously had quite a dip in form. Um. But this year, aside from you know, you know, he did he had a couple of times where he, where he hasn't had some great races, but um, but no, he's uh, he, he's he's doing he's doing I'd say he's doing pretty damn well this year. Yeah, one and, of my one of my favorite drivers this season. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. He's uh, yeah he's yeah he's he, he's 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 always sort of like there or thereabouts, and he seems you know, he he just seems a bit more sort of wholesome compared to mm-hmm. some of the others. Cough, stroll, cough. <clears throat> um. So yeah, moving on uh, further down the grid, Lando Norris cross cross the line P ten uh, starts P eighteen uh, due to engine penalties and and what have you. Um, again, pretty ahead of his teammate, got into Q three. I mean, that's pretty much the norm for McLaren this year, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, he's just consistently doing well. Um, I. Again, another driver that's quite quiet. Um, wasn't really discussing that much um, in commentary and what how his laps have been. Just kind of went out, drove, did tick the box that was needed, supported. I think he did help uh, Ricardo at one point as well with um, a slipstream as well. But yeah, he's just doing what sh- a first driver should do for the team. Um, and I think he stepped into this role very well. What really baffles me, and they said this at the start of qualifying, he is 22 years old. The maturity of these drivers and like how well they perform under uh, pressure is absolutely amazing. And I am really excited even for next season to see who he's going to be with um, for with McLaren driving for next season. And 
I hope Lando can get some um, good positions, maybe not points uh, tomorrow, but could make up some good positions. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think it's, uh, you know, I, I think it's safe to say that Norris is out and out the, uh, the number one driver at, at McLaren. I think he has been ever since Danny Rick was there. Mm-hmm. And he definitely established himself as that. It's also a very good point you made about the maturity of him because he's, uh, you forget he's only 22. He was born in 1999. Yeah, so he goes 23 this year. But yeah, even uh, still, younger uh, yeah. than me still. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah he, he's, he's turning 23 this year because his, his, his birthday's in November. Mm-hmm. And it's just, you, you, you just can't get your head around this, um, that he's been in F1 for four years now and he's still still that young. But, but you know, the, 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 drive, the drivers are getting getting that young. So it's, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, it's it's um, yeah, it's it's good to see Norris and these and these younger drivers sort of getting the opportunity to lead the team. So there's definitely a sort of definitely a sort of a shift in uh, in in the power, if you like, in F1. Unfortunately, not in the FIA, but that's another story. Um, yeah, I'm not getting into that. Um, and then on the on the back row, we have this year's rookie Zhou Guanyu. Uh, I mean, it's it's hard to say really because he's got quite a lot of engine penalties. Um, you know, you know, it's just uh, I'm not even sure where he crossed the line. Uh, I think he got into Q2. Uh, I could be mistaken. Thirteen. Yeah, I thought. Yeah, P. Yeah, P. So P13 down to P19 with engine penalties. Not ideal for him, um, but you know, but hopefully we'll see. Hopefully we'll see a bit of magic from him tomorrow. Yeah. It was a given that he would have to with the amount of engine problems he's had this season. We've said that multiple times. Like, he is performing probably one of the best seasons as a rookie driver that I've seen in a while. Um, He has just come out of the bag. And through no fault, through his own, he's had these DNFs. Had he not had these DNFs, he would be very, very much closer to where Bottas is in the driver's standing and doing so well for Alpha and the constructors. But... Yeah, um, again, he's one of the other drivers that I would say is probably one of my favorites this season because while he is technically a pay driver, given the amount of funding that he does get, um, he's still performing good, like better than good sometimes as well. He's done some amazing moves, amazing saves, amazing overtakes, and I'm hoping it's a good race for him, um, especially given F- after Silverstone and then bouncing back from that as well. He's just... I, I want to see him next season for sure. Um, and I hope that is possible. And while he is taking the penalties to, um, for tomorrow's race, he can still make up some good points because he's done some good overtaking because he's the type of rookie as well right now that he's willing to do the unthinkable overtakes and get the elbows out. Like he has nothing really much to lose because he's already performing so well. And he just wants to solidify that he is a F1 driver and wants to be a F1 a F1 driver for 2023. Yeah, I completely agree. You know, I, I think it's more than enough to justify his place next year. And like we mentioned earlier, reliability is really costing this season and he brings a lot of backing. You said it yourself, so he, he's brought the race results when his engine hasn't let him down and he brings the funding. He's done a decent job, especially given, you know, the step from F2 to F1 is pretty big, you know, all the hybrid systems or the rest of it. It's a he very, very win. big learning curve for them. Yeah. He didn't even win F2, like, because yeah. obviously I do watch F2. He kind of went down towards the end of the season, but, like, he still was producing well in the beginning of the season. He's passed Bottas a few times in qualifying and in finishes as well when they both finish, not when there's a one or the other DNF. So, and even the ones that he was DNF, um, Zhou Guanyu, he probably would have done probably – better than Bottas a few times in some of the races. So absolutely amazing from him. Yeah, yeah absolutely. He's, uh, yeah, he, he's, he's doing a bang-up job. Like I said, of Ocon. And, um, and yeah, he's, uh, as far as I'm concerned, he's more than in his place on the grid next season. And I, and I hope to see him confirm soon. And then last but by no means least is Mick Schumacher. Um, across the line, P4. Was he P15? He was definitely into Q2. P15, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because because I know Stroll was P14. Um, yeah, so P15, yeah. good penalties. He starts at he starts at the back of the grid. 
Um, the floor's yours. Yeah, I mean, he was the one with uh, Vettel, so points those are too. Like, how heartbreaking is that? Like, your protege, your mentee knocks you out by that little of a time difference. I'm just kind of confused as to why they didn't do something like with Bottas. You know that he's starting way at the back no matter what, or would be the last no matter what anyway, regardless of any other person's taking penalties. Why put him into Q? Like, why push so hard and maybe try to get into Q2? Because it would make a difference. Uh, you're using up tires as well. That's probably not needed. Leading potentially more to situations where you could have an incident go into the gravel, given the new gravel traps. I, I just don't understand it. I would have assumed him to be out in Q1 by like finishing P18 or something like that, or P17, because we all knew that he was going to start in P20. It just doesn't make sense. Yeah, um, you know, I just think Alpha maybe maybe dropped the ball a little bit on that one. They should have, uh, they you know they they, they should have given uh, given uh, sorry I was going to say given Stroll given Schumacher a toe. So it's only down the Camel Straight. I mean, that seems to be the best place of giving a driver a toe at Spa. Um, but yeah, you know, hopefully that fresh Ferrari engine will help uh, tomorrow. Be, ni- be nice to see him work his way up. I don't think he'll make it into the points, but um, but yeah, but he's a uh, yeah. It, I I think I think the result he had today is not a true representation of his pace, and obviously starting at the back of the grid. You know, that's not going to that's not going to do him many favors on paper, but everybody knows that he's better than that. Mm-hmm. And obviously, again, he's one of the ones that doesn't have a contract right now for 2023. It's still we've said this multiple times on different podcasts, on like everything F1 and even on Good Talk, and it's just it's been paused um, from what we are seeing on media. I. He's performing well after he got his first points. He is performing well to an extent, but I don't know if it's enough given how well these um, feeder series drivers are performing as well. Like Mick won in 2020, the F- um, FIA World Formula 2 Championship. He's just not performing like how it is. Obviously, you could say it's the car. It could be the funding, the house. Those are other factors as well, but he's just not performing as well, and comparing him to Joe as well, which I'm not really fa- a fan of comparing, but like Joe didn't win, but he's still performing well in his rookie year. Mick's taken two years to get points, and even then, it's not consistent points, and it's still kind of rookie mistakes that you're not expecting. Yuki has more points than Mick, and they both started the same year. And Yuki yeah. didn't even, I think he finished fourth in the constructors, uh, sorry, in the drivers' championship in F2, I think, or like. Definitely yeah, not. He was, he was fourth or fifth, I believe. Yeah. Exactly. So it's, I I would like to still see the Schumacher name go on, and I hope that maybe he can get a position with Haas or maybe with a different team. But it's still looking very unlikely him coming into twenty twenty three. He might take a sabbatical. He might take a year out, do like an Alex Albon or uh, Alcon as well. Take a year out and then come back better. Yeah, it could be enforced as well. Yeah. It's uh, it's yeah, it's 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 hard to say at, at at the moment. So that was your that was your qualifying review for the 2022 Belgian Grand Prix. So we'd just like to take a moment to uh to 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 give to you so to give a little promo of everything F1. Tell yeah. us tell us where you can. This feels weird for me because I'm part of everything F1 as well. So it's like. So, so, so you tell me where you can find us. <laughs> I mean, you can see our, you and me on Slack. <laughs> um, <laughs> but for those listening and those watching live, um, Everything F1, we are on all social media at Join EF1. That's on Facebook, Instagram, t- uh, Twitter, TikTok. We have a website called www.everythingf1. We post articles, um, content, opinion pieces pretty much daily <clears throat> we also have a youtube channel um starting up again we do a podcast that is filmed live uh every tuesday night and then is released on wednesday and it's on all streaming platforms uh if you want to like subscribe comment um i, I believe that's it <laughs> I, 
I, th- I think that's everything. Yeah, you know. So yeah, I appreciate you. Sometimes, sometimes you're on the spot a bit to, uh, to uh, yeah, to 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 give uh, to give that kind of thing. And as for Grid Talk, it's available on YouTube, where most episodes are recorded live, as well as Amazon Fire, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Music, Verbal, Omni Studio, and Pocket Cast. My favorite. Just search Formula One Grid Talk for our back catalogue with shows and previews, reactions to qualifying and race results. Please also consider supporting the channel on Patreon so we can get mics, lights, and better recording equipment. You can get your hands on some official Grid Talk merchandise on f1chronicle.com forward slash store. Also, make sure you subscribe so you're the first to know when each new weekly episode is released. We'll be back soon with plenty more F1 content, namely tomorrow for the review of the 2022 Belgian Grand Prix. But thank you very much for listening and goodbye. Bye. And recording stops. Yeah. Yes, we'll do a quick uh, a quick uh, post-race doodah because we have a couple of comments. Uh, first of all, someone in the comments, Sophia Richmond, don't know who that is. I, I wonder who that is. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, yeah. Somebody else. It's, yeah, it must be somebody else, yeah. Said it's going to be a good one. Uh, so Wednesday, shout out. So yeah, shout out Wednesday. Uh, the comments are quite quiet, actually. But mm-hmm. there's one person who I know just knew would be in the comments, Mr. Connor Walker. Connor, I hope you're still here, sir. Uh, hi, I hope you're keeping well. Uh, you, you guys hit. Ah, oh, here we are. Just a comment. You guys hit the nail on the head with the Ferrari strategy for the rest of the season. Yeah, we spit bare facts here, Con. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's just uh, yeah, it's just um, quite obvious uh, it, it how is. Ferrari strategy. Like we said, it's it's on our bingo card on social media of a Ferrari blunder. And I wonder by the end it'll be like every single tick for every single race because there's going to be at least one oh, for no, every single race. Be something after a race, yeah, no doubt. Yeah, um, and that ties into what else he said. The gap between Max and Charles kind of, kind of just all of a sudden became massive out of nowhere. I guess the media does a good job of making it seem competitive, but it's almost a foregone conclusion by now. That's so, a very good point. Thinking statistically, because I, I ran the numbers during the break, I think Charles needs to win four, the, four races... So four, yeah, four races. Max has to finish um, below eight with Charles with one or two fastest laps. I think. I think that's numbers. And then also the sprint as well. Charles will have to win the sprint. Max doesn't get points in the sprint. Again, unlikely. I think that's the numbers off the top of my head for in order for Charles to potentially win the world championship. Is it doable? Absolutely not. Given how Red Bull is and how consistent Red Bull is. But it still statistically is a possibility. Anything could happen. It's mathematically possible. Yeah, statistically, yeah. Is, it, it, human, is it humanly possible? No. Realistically, no, absolutely yeah. not. <laughs> they have a better chance than constructors if they can get both their drivers. But again, that's even still a long shot as well because the gap is getting quite big between them. But it's more likely that over the drivers. And even Bonato said a few times, like, they don't care about the drivers now. They just care about the constructors. So, we'll see. Yeah, that's a, that's a very good point. Um, one other thing Connor said this is actually the last comment. He said, any plans to do a pod in the upcoming weeks on the news with Danny and other driving news? We will definitely have something out once we know um, where Piastri is going. Excuse me, most likely McLaren. Once we know where Danny Rick's going, once we know... Um, where uh, or who's going to be filling that Alpine seat and all the other seats mm-hmm. will will likely do something, but we'll um yeah me, well uh, yeah we, we'll we'll probably wait until all the seats are confirmed. I mean, you can do it even with Piastri because he is kind of the catalyst. So if Piastri goes to McLaren, that leaves Alpine a seat. So Ricardo could take Alpine, but if Oscar goes to Alpine. Ricardo can go only to Williams, Haas, Alfa Romeo, or Alfa Tori because he can't go back obviously to McLaren. Yeah, and but he's then, not—he's not, not going to go to Alfa Tauri. No, but he, yeah, 
it, yeah, that's it's quite an interesting one. That's why I said, like, is it possible for him to potentially take a, a break for a year and see how mm. that goes? But my, my only thought is if he takes a break, I don't think he'll come back. back. No, to be fair, these F2 drivers and even F3 drivers are literally wiping. I would love to see. I feel like they need to do like a battle of like the top five F2 drivers versus like the bottom five F1 drivers and kind of battle it out to see do, do who would win. To, do you think we need to do the F1 Hunger Games? Yeah, or even just like an F1 team that is filled by the winner of F2 and the runner-up of F2. Like have a Ferrari, not Ferrari, have a F1. So, so basically have a... Have a or, or you could say maybe the top three. So, so you could have a Haas or Alfa Romeo seat, Williams or Aston Martin seat, and an Alfa Tauri seat. Mm, yeah. Or even just own kind of F1 having their own team on its yeah. own. I mean, l- legality probably not possible, but like that kind of you know you could in. be the you know you could be the team team principal, don't you? Uh, Michael, uh. Michael Massey. <laughs> Shut up! No, uh, uh, yes. he's still in motorsport now, which is still surprising because I see every article is it's either I'm leaving or I'm going. I'm leaving. I'm going. Oh wait, I've just started a new position in motorsport. But I'm leaving. Uh, it just doesn't make sense. It's yeah. confusing. But yeah, uh, there's just so much uh, uncertainty because then you also still have what's going on with McLaren outside of F1. You still have Extreme E. Um, you still have IndyCar, all the situations with IndyCar. Formula um, E. Formula E. There's just so much that is kind of crazy. And I'm hoping people are saying that it's going to be done within the next week or so i think i think probably before we go to singapore we'll know what's going on yeah hopefully i hope yeah uh you know Can't take ho- it. yeah hopefully soon we'll uh we'll, we'll have some have some more news and as soon as we do we'll obviously bring it to you but yes um i think we're going to call it there because uh because i appreciate we all have we all have things to do we want to get on with our evenings some of us have pets to feed as well i'm currently <laughs> joined by dumb and dumb currently sitting down here looking at me uh, I, to... I got my one whimpering right now <laughs> exactly yeah so yeah so we'll uh but yeah we will uh we will we'll draw proceedings to a closer today thank you everybody for watching live thank you to everybody specifically connor walker for commenting i knew i'd see you there and yes, we will uh, we will see you soon.